which contains up to four million pounds of gravel that acts as ballast. The third operator who runs the lift cables sits in a cab on the 100 foot long truss that connects the two sections. All three men are largely blind to the crane's overall maneuvering, so they follow radio instructions from a supervisor on the ground. Coming down now. At 5.15 p.m., with the roof piece suspended high above first base, Big Blue began to buckle. My friend and I looked at each other and said, that ain't right, there's something wrong with this. And then all of a sudden the crane just started drifting. We're like, are they moving? And then it's like, no, it's not moving. They're not moving. It's, it's coming on its own. Oh, it was just an incredible loud sequence of noises. First, you heard the brakes coming off of the crane. Then you heard the first pop. Then you heard the next pop. What the hell is that? And then you heard a cacophony of sound where everything is coming down. Amid the rubble lay the greatest cost of the disaster. Chunks of concrete roof debris had struck a basket containing three steel workers, sending them plummeting 300 feet to their deaths. There were three people sitting near home plate, down near home plate. And uh, that has one hell of an impact on people. I still don't go to ball games because if I go look at home plate, I'll think of it. So I don't think I'll ever see a Miller Park ball game. OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, moved immediately to investigate. Still photos from the scene showed the stadium flag in full flourish, an early sign that high winds had played the decisive role. The wind was estimated at 10 to 20 miles per hour at ground level, and even gustier where the load had dangled from Big Blue. And since it's so close to the edge of the stadium, you're getting a, a rolling effect from these winds and increasing your velocity. And you're talking about this is like 190, 200 feet in the air where, this, where the wind is coming over the stadium. So it's coming against the stadium, rolling up over it, and blowing against the load. The heavier the load, the lower the acceptable wind speed. But OSHA determined that crane operators rushing to keep on schedule had negligently failed to take any wind measurements. Winds over 10 miles per hour should have postponed the lift. Instead, the crew went forward, with gusts exceeding 30 miles per hour. The load had swayed so severely that a foot-thick kingpin bolt securing the crane's base had nearly sheared off, causing the loud pops heard by eyewitnesses and toppling the crane. Watch it, watch it. talking big blue you're talking about a big team of people working on this thing you're talking about very sophisticated construction workers that are used to doing really heavy construction to see a crew of four separate operators agree to do that lift under those conditions amazed me it just shouldn't happen in 2000 a Milwaukee County jury found the crane operators 97% liable and the crane manufacturers 3% responsible for failing to fully communicate Big Blue's limitations. The jury awarded the families of the three dead steel workers punitive damages of $94 million. As a result of the accident, OSHA issued new directives governing the training of heavy construction workers. Since then, there have been serious reform. They're teaching the, the operators more engineering. You have to check, and you have to check, and you have to check. Uh, and your life depends on it. And your co-workers' lives depend on it. 